So we are also honored to, to have elected officials from, from Broward County uh, to, to join us today. Uh, so the first, uh, the first elected official I would like to, I'd like to ask to come up is uh, the Vice Mayor of uh, the City of Pembroke Pines, Jay Schwartz. Uh, just a brief introduction. Uh, Vice Mayor Schwartz has been living in Pembroke Pines since 1989 and has been very active in his community for many years. Before becoming Vice Mayor of Pembroke Pines, he was the Chair of the City's Economic Development Board and Chair of the Broward County Central Examining Board for General and Specialty Contractors. We are excited to have him here tonight. Uh, without further ado, Jay Schwartz. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, I was born and raised in the city of Philadelphia. You know, and, and I take um, I take my civics extremely, extremely um, important. Uh, I was raised by a single mom. Uh, my sister and I struggled um, growing up in an environment where we weren't the same as everybody else in class. We didn't have the best clothes. We grew up on government assistance. And I found myself being the first in the family to come to college, to go to college, to have an opportunity to uh, bring my life experience uh, to start a, a new life in, in South Florida. And politics wasn't my thing. Never once thought about it until 2004. Now in 2000, we had this election that was I still don't know if my, if my vote counted. I don't know about you. <laughs> but, you know, from 2000 to 2004 and, and how the country was going and just the tone, uh, I got involved in, in, in the 2004 uh, campaign. And I was a poll watcher. And uh, I was just going to do my 7 to 11 shift, not a big deal. And I found myself looking at voters in the city of Pembroke Pines being refused the opportunity to vote because their registration card was old. And they were told to go to another poll polling place. Now, for those of you who are millennials, I apologize if I'm insulting you, but there was really no internet back in 2004. And, you know, to get online, it cost you a bunch of money, and to, call, uh, to talk on the cell phone cost you a whole bunch of minutes, right? So, my 7-Eleven wound up being until 9 p.m. because I went to another polling place and then I had to call voters rights attorneys to make sure that people had the right to vote. Fast forward to 2008. You think we got it right in four years? Absolutely not. Long lines. Voter suppression under the guise of, of, of rules and regulations that, that were uh, coming down from Tallahassee it just didn't make any sense to me. Now, I lost in 2008. I ran a, a local, uh, I, I ran because I cared about my community. The look and feel of the neighborhoods were going down. Crime was up. The traditional local stuff. But I stayed engaged. I stayed engaged in the grassroots uh, movement, just like you guys are doing. And you know what? Two people come together, becomes four, and four becomes eight, and eight becomes 16. And before you know it, a grassroots effort has a voice. And I get, I get asked the question all the time, Jay, why do you serve? I serve because you give back to your community. But you, you serve because you want to give, not get. We have to get those who want to get out of politics. If you are in the, if, if you want to run for office, if you want to serve the people, you have to serve them before yourself. So the question is, is what is Emerge doing? Emerge is bringing to light the fact that for too many decades, your voice has not been heard. What good is politics and what good is we the people? If we the people isn't all the people, then we don't have it right yet. So, when I sit down with that single mom who has three jobs and doesn't know where it's going to come from, I feel that I know that. And when I see, um, when I hear the undertone, I know what that is too. 
and it's got to stop. And it's stopping tonight. It's stopping because there is a group of people in this room who are changing America as we know it. And that's a great thing. Inclusiveness is a great thing. You know, I'm not here tonight for any other purpose but to, but to acknowledge the grassroots and passion of doing the right thing. You know, there are, there are steps that we can take and uh, I am proud to have uh, voted for a resolution just a short few weeks ago here in the city of Pembroke Pines that we offered the governor of Florida the opportunity to make us a pilot city to vote by mail. To vote by mail because it would save us hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, a hundred thousand dollars is just for one commission seat. It's a quarter of a million dollars for a mayor. The money is insane. That money could be spent more wisely by providing voter information. Don't send me a sample ballot, send me the ballot. And so we are expecting what we expected some years ago, which is falling on deaf ears up in Tallahassee because they don't listen. I don't know what they're afraid of. Maybe it's because if the people vote, they will be out of a job. Maybe it's because the more people vote, America changes. Perhaps that's what it is. Voting is supposed to be for the, is, 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 is a right. It's for that veteran that gave his life. And quite honestly, we need to have more people involved in the voting process. So we, I, I heard, I, I heard the, the last speaker um, speak about the governor's race. The governor's race had miserable results. Nationally, only 35% of the people showed up. That means two-thirds stayed home. We have a great candidate running for a commission seat in Miramar. Four years ago, only 4% of the city of Miramar showed up to vote for a mayor's race. 4%. In my city, you're lucky to see 15% for a mayor's race, let alone 8 or 9% for, for a commission seat. So why do we ask people to vote if we're not asking for their voice? You see, it's not asking for a job, it's asking for what we can do for them. So, um, if there's anything I can do to help the cause, I'm a phone call away and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Thank you. So next I would like to like to introduce another gentleman who's always smiling and uh, and you know has has quite the flair with his uh, with his speeches. Uh, I would like to introduce Mitch Caesar, DNC chair of Broward County. And a brief introduction on him. Mitch has been active in Broward politics since he was 20 years old. Initially mentored by Governor and Senator Lawton, Ch Lawton Childs, Mitch has developed an encyclopedic knowledge of Florida politics through his commitment to the state. Mitch has written several books on both national and state politics and appears frequently on MSNBC. He currently serves as the chairman of the Broward County Executive Committee. <coughs> Without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Mitch Caesar. First, let me thank everybody for allowing me to be here this evening. You know, it's interesting. I was here a couple of years ago for the very first time, and I, and I was so impressed, not just by the size of the turnout or the quality of the people, but by the enthusiasm and, and frankly, the, the intellectual drive, as has just been spoken about by previous speakers, about how important this organization is, not just in Broward County, not just in Florida, but potentially nationwide. And it made me think about Emerge itself. And the, the chart that was up there that was great and very helpful, 
talking about not only what Emerge does, but the politics of what you're trying to do through education. You know, we live in very perilous times, as you well know. And I'd hate to think of a time for Emerge not to exist. And I'm so thankful that Emerge does exist because we watch CNN, I watch MSNBC, I hardly ever watch Fox, um, I have to say. I give it a try about once every month, I watch for about two, three minutes, and that's about all I can tolerate, and I switch to something else. Um, but when we watch TV or the cable channels, or whatever the case may be, we see what's going on around the world. We see what happened in Paris, specifically not only with the Jewish community, but across Europe. We hear about plots being foiled in Australia. We now hear about the threats to the uh, Mall of the Americas in Minnesota. And we know, we know it's not a pure accident or coincidence that Minnesota was targeted either. We know that, we understand that, just like cases in Michigan as well. But a, a world without a merge would make us much poorer for it. We're very lucky. You know, without a merge, you know, you hear about stories about radicalization and bringing people from the United States to other sides of the world and that type of recruitment. I'm thankful for Emerge because of a different recruitment, and you saw those charts, a recruitment of candidates. And I think that's what's important. It's not just doing the work of training people to be part of the political process. That's necessary. But it is very important for Emerge to emerge and start to produce candidates for office, whether it's in Broward County or South Florida or anywhere in the nation. That is the next logical step for this organization. You are part of the new civil rights movement. We just spoke about how this is the last day of Black History Month. And I've had the privilege of, I don't know how, if any of you have seen the movie Selma yet. And one of the heroes of Selma is someone who's alive now, Congressman John Lewis of Atlanta. And over the years, I've been very, very lucky that Congressman Lewis has become a friend of mine. And I've had discussions with him about things. And I've given this, and I apologize in advance to the Black Caucus who may have heard one or two of these sentences before. But when I sat down with John before the election, and John has come to Broward County to do political fundraisers for the Broward Democratic Party because that's how dedicated he is to democratic principles. But I was up in Washington recently with him and I said, talking about the election about to happen soon, and he said, Mitch, what we have to do is find a way to get in the way. A way to get in the way in a nonviolent, peaceful, protest or activism. And what I would suggest is that's exactly what Emerge does. Through education, through activism, through the type of things that are necessary short term, but probably more important because of world events long term. And we have to do that. We have to find a way to get in the way. We all have different paths on that road. My paths began in college with a lot of stories that I told one recently for the first time and a few others of a lot of people mentoring me that were part of the civil rights movement from the time I was young. And I will share a story with you, slightly different story. In the late 1990s, I was the Democratic chairman of Florida as well. Now I sit on the executive board of the Democratic National Committee. I represent the 14 southern states have for the last 10 years on the 40-member National Board of Directors of the Democratic Party of the United States. But back then in the late 90s, I was the Democratic Chairman of Florida. And I used to encounter people who, because of my last name, did not think that I was Jewish. And the things I would hear and the things I would count, encounter were significant. Well, one time I met somebody who said to me, you know, you have three strikes against you. I kind of had a feeling, as many of you might, where this was going. 
And they said, well, first, you're from South Florida. That's a negative. And incidentally, this wasn't like 1980. This was like 1998. And they said, you're from South Florida. So I went, OK, what's next? They said, well, you're originally from New York. That's even worse. <laughs> and now I'm kind of waiting and waiting and waiting. And they said, and the third mark against you is you're Jewish. Now, I tell you this story not because just because it happened, but because I was told this not by a Republican, but by a Democratic elected official. So it's easy to blame Republicans, and God knows they deserve the blame. <laughs> but this was by an elected legislator who was a Democrat. So if we know enough is beneath the surface, you can imagine how much, excuse me, how much is above the surface. We all can share an experience of that type. And that's why I bring up that story here, frankly, for the first time I've ever told that story in public. I've told that story only a few times, usually to my two kids, as an instructable, teachable moment. And that is that we have more in common than we have apart. All of us. We all honor a worthy God or deity. We all want to live in a comfortable manner and a safe manner. We all want our children to be educated as best they can. We all want the next generation to do better and go further than we did. That is family, that is God, that is frankly the America I believe we are and should be. But having said that, I cannot stress to you enough that we must all be together in this. Dr. King in his famous speech talked about that he could see in the distance the promised land. And he also commented that he knew he'd never arrive there, which of course he did not but spoke about that everyone else had the opportunity to get there. That was his vision. That was his hope. My hope is similar in that we all arrive in the promised land. We have so much in common. We need to be united. We need to be together. We need to fight. We agree on the same issues. May I say most of America agrees on the same issues. And if we stay steadfast and united, then we all will arrive in the promised land together. And that is my dream. Thank you very much. <laughs>